Are you tired of watching shows that only give you general social media theory and expect you to figure out how to apply it to your own industry? Join us for this week's episode of Social Chatter, the industry's longest running social media marketing news talk show. Not only will you learn the latest breaking news, but you'll also gain practical advice on how to apply it. Now here's your host, Christian Karasevich. Welcome, welcome everyone to Social Chatter, your weekly social media marketing news talk show. My name is Christian Karasevich, uh, CEO and founder of socialchefs.com. And this week on episode 292 of Social Chatter, uh, we've got some great topics that we're going to be discussing with you this week. Lots of social media news. It's always changing. There's always something new every single week. Uh, This week, by the way, we're going to be talking about and let me make sure I, I say this right, by the way, because I always tend to like, like I was going to say Amazon Live Shopping, but we're actually going to be talking about Facebook Live Shopping Fridays. It's this new feature that Facebook's rolling out. Uh, in addition to that, we're going to be talking about Instagram pronouns, along with, if we have some time here, uh, Pinterest is working on live video, which is which is actually is actually rather interesting. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go and bring on my co-host. I'm going to bring on uh, Sarah here and... Um, we're going to then bring on our guest and, and kick things off. So Sarah, I'm going to go bring you on, but it's great uh, great to see you. How are you doing? Great to see you, Christian. Happy afternoon, morning, evening, wherever it is that we're finding everybody. I'm in a different place too. So um, it's great to be back and to talk a lot of live stuff this week. Yeah, um, it's either been a lot of, uh, a lot of live audio <laughs> mm-hmm. or... Or live video. And that's the thing. Here's the thing. Like live video, live audio, they're very important. Uh, they're great uh, aspects to be able to reach customers and they're a faster way for you to create content. So keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. But who do we have joining us this week? So it's great that we're talking about live video because we have someone who loves video in addition to co- in to, addition to podcasts. It's Juliet Stapleton, who's a consultant, a coach. She hosts her own podcast called Show Up and Stand Out. And she brings together sort of your true human nature, human design, organic marketing, publicity, all together in a great way to be visible and to get those great leads and clients. So let's bring on Juliet. Juliet, hey, how you doing? Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be back here again. Thank you so much for joining us again. By the way, I want to uh, just comment on the quality of your mic. I know you've changed it and it sounds really good. I mean, it's like super quiet. Are you doing anything different to get that effect? Well, I have invested into this sort of like a public speaking headset. That okay. It's a Rode um, HS2. Nice. And I, ha- I had to get a little mini sound card. So it's a little kind of extra level now of, you know, it's not just plug and play. But I absolutely love it because I can do all this that I normally do on my Fantastic. video. Fantastic. And wow. I don't hit anything. And so the microphone seems to be really good quality. So yes, thank you so much for the compliment. I feel good about it. And if you're going to be doing a lot of live video, by the way, or live audio, I would recommend doing exactly what Juliet did, which was make an investment in yourself in in your mm-hmm. business, uh, because it's going to help improve the quality. I mean, in this case, your like, your sound is amazing. So uh, I want to thank you very much uh, for for obviously you know for telling people about that. Um, did uh, Sarah cover everything about you, or was there anything else you wanted to add? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just a visibility that sells strategist is what I call myself because I'm all about showing up and being visible, being available to those who are looking for someone like you. And then with your personal nature and with that, you know, unique energy that you have, connecting to people one on one, and that that's me. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Sarah, actually. Sure. So let's just jump right in. We, Christian, you spoke a little bit about this, that Facebook is bringing live shopping and it's starting tomorrow. They are going to premiere this new opportunity. Um, They're starting with brands like Abercrombie & Fitch, Sephora, Bobbi Brown, um, a lot of beauty and and fashion brands that they're starting with. But really... um, It's a build on last summer's trials where they tried this out before. um, And it's kind of building on everything that folks have been doing during the pandemic, right? We've been doing all of the everything from home, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of companies have been doing these video, um, video tutorials, more video shopping using Teams and Zoom. Well, now this is going to be live video on Facebook 
um, to do shopping. Yeah, and not cool. buy one thing that Facebook really made a point of um, distinguishing is that this isn't buying, this is shopping, right? Since we've, since so many people have been in lockdown and isolation, we really haven't had that experience of shopping, right? We most, a lot of us just go online and do the transaction. We do the research and buy the product, don't buy the product, but this is giving that, bringing that experience back. Um, and making it easier to shop too, which I think is great because Facebook, um, Facebook owns Instagram. We all know that if you didn't, now, you know, um, Instagram has great shopping features where you can shop the post. So this is terrific that Facebook is bringing it into their video, um, their video tools for brands. Um, so it's uh, it's going to be really interesting to see how it rolls out. Again, they're starting with um, some big brands and um, make it really easy to see um, what you can shop for. And of course, they're going to collaborate with creators too. So I think we're going to see a lot of all of our favorite fashion bloggers and beauty bloggers come up, um, especially with the brands that they've chosen to test this out with this week. It's going to be interesting. I mean, it's, so this screenshot we have here, I mean, this, or animated GIF, this is literally what it looks like on Facebook. You're going to be able to see somebody's demoing, for example, a product. And I, I like the point that you made about like, this is actually, uh, it, it's shopping versus buying. So you got to mm -hmm. remember it's, uh, think about like window shopping, you know, people want to actually, this is where in live video, by the way, I'm, I'm interested to hear what Juliet has on this. Uh, but this is where people can demo something to uh, essentially things are going to become product demos. If you really think about mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's product demos that people are doing live that are going to get people to then potentially buy. So you're going to have, you're going to have to be a good salesman basically, essentially. Yeah, uh, is, what, is what it sounds like uh, with this feature, you know, and as you mentioned, I mean, this is coming, this is getting rolled out starting tomorrow. Um, a couple other things, by the way, if you're, and I mentioned this at the beginning of the show, Amazon already has this Amazon live. So if you, for example, mm -hmm. go to business essentials live, uh, I have a, a show there and you can actually check out what I do there. And that's Amazon live shopping. Uh, but this is Facebook live shopping. It's rolling out on mobile and desktop in the U S and here's another cool little feature. If your brand you, you know, have liked on Facebook or followed on Facebook, uh, has products on their, uh, shop section the facebook mm -hmm. shop tab now uh, is gonna it's gonna pop up on that shop tab so what do you guys what do you think about this juliet is this a useful feature for business what do you think oh absolutely absolutely there's so many uses and of course the obvious um, uses are for the uh, all sorts of businesses that sell products but even if you're selling um if you can you can use it for affiliate marketing right because you can go live and you can share screen and and do something and you can have that product um I'd add it and you know what you said something Christian you said that you 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 need to become a very good sales person you know if you're doing this but I kind of slightly disagree I think that we already trying to do that so for example if I want to promote something I have to go live or or record a video and I would have to kind of sell that product in the video hoping mm -hmm. that somebody will click on the link or maybe says oh this is great you know I'll do it tomorrow and then tomorrow comes and then they forgot so I actually see that this is a really good opportunity for all sorts of businesses to be creative with and uh, capture that excitement while you are giving value, while you're showing the benefits of the products or or the services or anything. Uh, I want to see first, of course, how technically is it going to be implemented? Like what exactly can I sell my coaching services? You know, can I do that if I target, if I create a little product? Can I get people, um, you know, uh, enrolling straight away into the course or something? That's what my questions are for this. But I'm really, really looking forward to um, getting this feature and testing it out. Mm -hmm. And Juliet, it reminds me a little too of the um, MLN, MLM um, marketing and sales, you know, people who are maybe doing the home business with whatever product it might be. Um, it also reminds me, I like what you said, you may not have to be a great salesperson either. You can just demonstrate what something can do. A long time ago, when I first started consulting, I needed to get out of the house. And so I taught cooking classes at a Williams Sonoma. 
and they gave us the whole list of products that you had to use during it and the curriculum and all of that. And it wasn't a hard sell. You just use the products. People saw it and liked it and either bought it or not. Right. They got to hear from an expert. So this is really translating that kind of thing into live video, but also adding the sale. I'm really interested to see how this sales piece is going to come through. Exactly. Exactly. Because, you know, I, um, there's a lot of people out there and they're maybe not very technical, but they would go live and they would show the products that they mm -hmm. have. And, you know, I, I work with several boutiques and, um, you know, ladies go live. They, they, they record videos, they produce content all the time and, you know, they sell from this content. Wouldn't it be even more awesome that they could just go live and do it and sell it there and then? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so they don't rely on someone who has to watch a replay necessarily. Well, these these features will be still available, as far as I know, on the replay as well. So it's not you don't have to be there live anyway. But it's just so much more interactive because we work mm -hmm. with people, we buy from people, we go to shops where we like people who are there. You know, we if I don't like somebody who works in a particular establishment, I never go there. People are important to me. Mm -hmm. So I think that this is a great feature to just even, you know, show up and say, hey, this is me and this is me in my business. You are now experiencing me literally me in my business in the comfort of your home and you can buy from me as well in the comfort of your home. I love where it's heading. Right. I do too. And I remember there, a dear friend of mine used to have a, a wonderful shop and every week she would do a live video of what came in in her shop. This was early on in Facebook days and she did a fantastic job, really drew people into her store. So, and as Christian said, YouTube has, uh, I'm sorry, Amazon has been having um, live video as well, where you can sell product link products. Um, and I think Christian, you've done it. Scott Ayers spoke about it last week too, about he sold a few products, maybe some of the things that he uses for his live feed he sells. Yep. Um, interesting to know that TikTok is also testing this and um, YouTube is integrating e-commerce too. It sounds like perhaps this summer that may be tested and rolled out as well. And one other thing I want to add real quick about this is that this is actually not new. So like, it seems like it's really new, but it's new here in the States. This is huge in other countries. Mm -hmm. They've been doing this for years. Yep. And so now it's finally getting here and now everybody's you know going to see how, uh, how useful it can be. Uh, I'm excited about this. I think, I, you know, as you know, I use Amazon live quite a bit and I think that this is a, a very good feature um, for people to be able to have. Um, I also find it interesting because, well, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if this is a way for Facebook to diversify their revenue because, you know, like right now they're mostly generating the revenue from ads and that's going to be mm -hmm. changing significantly. Um, so yep. we'll see how this goes, but that's a uh, Facebook live shopping Fridays. Again, it'll tune it. It'll, it'll start tomorrow. Uh, so if you start to see some new things on your feed and whatnot, um, don't be alarmed. That's what it is. Right. So turn it back over to you. Where do we go next? So next we are going to Instagram pronouns. So this may be something uh, new for people. I And Christian, when you and I were talking about the show too, I explained, I've been using pronouns on my email signatures and introducing myself with pronouns in meetings for more than four years. Mm -hmm. But I also work in the a lot in the nonprofit space, in the education space, um, and work with groups that, about gender equity. So this is a real push forward as far as social media platforms go in equity, okay. especially for the LGBTQ community. So this is a way within your profile um, where you can put your pronouns. Now, I've seen people put their pronouns into their actual names, especially on LinkedIn. Um, a wow. lot of folks that I know who work in um, higher ed have their name and then their, their pronouns right after it. But that does take up character counts. So if you have a long name, right, Christian? Mm -hmm. You may be bumping <laughs> up against those character counts. Yeah. Um, so this is actually a way for you to show um, what you prefer as your pronouns um, also show that you're an ally as well. Of course, you don't have to use them. If you don't fill out your pronouns, they won't, it will, it just won't show. So Christian, I think you were going to show your phone. We were actually going to walk yeah, through you putting your pronouns, um, onto your sure. profile. Yeah. Let me go and make a switch to that real quick. So 
basically I'm going to just demo this. I'm on my Instagram app on my mobile device. So I'm just going right. to do this real quick. We're going to switch to this. Now you're going to see my Instagram profile. And so basically all we're doing here is we're going to go to our Instagram profile. We're going to click on edit profile. Mm -hmm. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to see this new section here called pronouns. As you can see, it's kind of blank and I can add my pronouns. So Sarah, for example, right. how, I think I can add up to four, right? You can add up to four pronouns. Yeah. And um, they are pre-populated by Instagram. So if you start um, typing he or they, okay, you can pick go. from pick from those pronouns. Um, what's nice is that Instagram is also recognizing that they may not know everything. And that if there's a pronoun that you prefer that's not listed, you can actually click on learn more. I think it's learn more. Actually, yours looks a little different than mine did last week. Um, but you can suggest to Instagram other pronouns too. It really shows that they are taking this step toward equity and they want to learn. They want to be open um, and learn as they go. And then so. another note about this, by the way, is that you can choose to show it to your followers only. So when you turn that on, only people who follow you will see your pronouns. Right. So just kind of think, think about that. So I'm just going to hit done. And then now here you go. We now have my pronouns listed here and then they right. should show up on my profile here. Yeah. So, and it'll just be a light you know. gray right next to your name, not your yeah. username, but your name um, right. on Instagram. So um, I did have to restart my phone to get yeah. this um, to show up as an option for me to add, um, even though everything was up to date. My um, operating system was up to date, my app was up to date. Um, and I don't think you can do it on desktop yet either. But I guess the big question is why use pronouns for your business, yes, right? Yes, great question, yeah. Um, and it's a great way, I mean, with the Instagram profiles, you can add four. So you know, if you are a business owner and you wanna add they, them, then, he, his, or something like that to show uh -huh. that you're, you are, an, you are an, an owner that identifies as male. You can do that. But really what it does is it brings your business values, your personal values to social media, okay. right? In a very inclusive way. Um, and it's a way to raise marginalized voices to show that you're an ally, that you um, value diversity, um, within your company, you as a person, within your customers too. Um, and it just shows that you welcome people bringing their whole selves to your business, whether that's a customer coming through the door or an employee. I think we're going to see more and more and more younger um, mm -hmm. generations, especially Gen Z, um, have grown up using pronouns, right? Um, as as part of classrooms and meetings and name tags and all of that. Um, so this is, it's really, I think, as far as I know, it's the first social media platform to actually have this as part of a field in their profile. Yeah, no, that's really useful information. Uh, Juliet, what do you think about this? Um, it's it's kind of very, I will be honest with you, it's it's a interesting uh, area for me. And I have these discussions with my Gen Z daughter all the time. And I, I, I am all inclusive. I am absolutely, I accept absolutely everyone. I never discriminate. And I love the diversity in the world. And uh, I don't have that feature. I just checked on my phone as well. I don't know if it's because I have a business account, but there was just not, nowhere where I could go and, and check that. But I think it's really, really important. Now, if it, this is something that in this day and age is uh it's important to make the statement then mm -hmm. i'm I, I think it's brilliant that instagram comes out and acknowledges this mm -hmm. and I, i'm kind of surprised actually yeah. that like tiktok for example hasn't you know it, because of the type of user tiktok usually has on their platform surprised they haven't added this functionality yet um again mm -hmm. i mean it does need it, it is just for the profile right now doesn't you know i assume they're gonna maybe roll it out for a business like if you're a business with an instagram account maybe you want to uh, you know, you may, you may need mm -hmm. the business profile features for certain things. Um, having an Instagram profile for a business. Um, if you want the pronoun, uh, addition, then yeah, you know, you, you can mm -hmm. add it there, but switching to the business account, 
Um, I don't think they rolled it out yet to there. It is. It, it, my my Instagram account is a business account. Okay, so cool. Okay. It doesn't matter on Instagram if you have a personal account or a business account. Instagram okay. isn't like Facebook in that manner. Um, gotcha. And what it does is it gives you insights because I needed to test yeah. um, metrics. And I thought, well, no better place to do it than on my own sandbox where I can't mess up a client's account, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it doesn't matter um, if you have an individual personal profile or a business profile this and i assume creators are the same way to the creator profile on instagram so nice. um and julia you like i said i had to restart my phone completely i had to shut it down and bring it back up yeah, I'm, gonna um, I'm gonna check it out and i i really think and and also because i'm based in estonia mm -hmm. and i get all the features months after they roll out mm -hmm. in the state you know, even when I lived in Ireland, it usually took about four, uh, twelve months before we got the features. So I'm sort of like on the back burner here. <laughs> by, the time, by the time I'm going to get the feature, it's going to be a norm for everyone. So right. yeah, but hopefully I will. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. so that's Instagram pronouns. Is there anything else you want to add about this, Sarah? No, I think it's great. I think it's wonderful that they did it before Pride Month in the United States. Um, and I think it's a great way for us to show um, to show a little more equity on social media. Fantastic. Yeah. So, so and I, I love the point you all brought up about Instagram pronouns. So um, let's move into our third topic uh, for the week. Yes. Third topic, um, not to be outdone, is... Pinterest is going to have live video and they're going to start next week with a big live Pinterest live video fest. So Monday to Tuesday, May 26th, May 24th to 26th, um, creators and pinners, unfortunately, only in the United States and only in the app, but both iOS and Android app users will be able to use them. Um, they're going to work with a variety of creators to um, have live video where you can comment and interact with them. They're going to cover everything from fashion styling and beauty to morning routines. I assume there's going to be cooking and some DIY and crafting in this because isn't that what Pinterest is all about, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Um, so it's really interesting. Pinterest, we haven't talked a lot about Pinterest, right? Yet it's been this growing sleeper in the background. In 2020, they report that there have been three times more pinning on Pinterest um, in this last year. So this is adding a whole new realm um, to Pinterest. Yeah, this, this is pretty cool, actually. I mean, I I just, I see so many really interesting things off of this. You know, the fact that, um, well, Pinterest has primarily been known for, you know, just a place to go store things, uh, mm -hmm. you know, a place to discover like recipes and, and DIY and things like that. And a push in a live video actually makes a lot of sense here because if I'm a Pinterest user, let's say I'm going to Pinterest and I want to learn how to make a recipe. So mm -hmm. it's great to be able to then direct me to a blog post, but now what if you could direct me to a live video or a pre-recorded video, for example, you know, that, that is in a, a video mm -hmm. of sorts where I'm able to like quickly watch and, you know, see this. This also reminds me of like, you know, very similar of like TikTok content or YouTube shorts content, even where mm -hmm. somebody's quickly showing how they actually go about making something. And then maybe their, their piece after watching that video is a direct link to the article for example where they can actually go get the instructions the kit they could do you know they could either do shopping directly in pinterest mm -hmm. etc the other thing i also think is really cool about this is you know pinterest has this feature where they they um they will let you take a photo of something and it will automatically recognize other similar items i'm wondering mm -hmm. if this actually ties into that and if you're doing a video and it's like hey what microphone am I using? I wouldn't have to actually answer that question, but maybe it actually automatically picks up the chair behind me, the microphone, you know, the um, the uh, gain, the, the booster that I have here, for example, on my uh, microphone. I'm wondering if it picks that stuff up or it will pick it up automatically with this live feature. I don't know. What do you guys think? It makes me feel very good about living in the 21st century. <laughs> 
<laughs> I think it's awesome. And, and you know, plus to uh, on top of this kind of technical things and, and handiness for us as, as content creators, again, it's all about interaction, isn't it? Every time when we add a video, especially when it's a live video and mm -hmm. Pinterest is, uh, I myself, I'm not on Pinterest, you know, it's just something like I always saw it like a big bookmark site. And um, that's not the way I, I sort of tap into the information. However, my 80 year old mom just joined Pinterest and she's all over it. She loves it. So when for her, for example, in talking about recipes and things like that, being able to also interact with people, being able to, um, you know, join, join life, learn from observing what they're doing. Um, it's a huge addition to quality of her life even, you know, so that's for, for the users. I, I absolutely love where Pinterest is heading. And for us as uh, content creators, again, you know, uh, being able to showcase what we're doing, being able to uh, sort of drive the traffic into our, our websites and to, to our blogs and, you know, um, sell again um, mm -hmm. and do all sorts of stuff, you know, and implement that into our overall strategy. I think it's very exciting. This yeah. is actually, I, I'm really excited about this. I got to say, I mean, the like examples I was reading through. So, so I think part of it is if you go in, by the way, I did drop the link to register for this. It's the Pinterest creators connect event, go and register for that. Because if you kind of look through what's here, I mean, you've got, uh, let me find the actual person. So, um, you know, so you've got people that are talking about, like, if you think about what kind of content goes on Pinterest recipes, DIY, um, mm -hmm. morning routines and rituals, things like that live video with that makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. So I I'm really excited to see kind of where this is going to go. I mean, it's a, a Pinterest live page, um, you know, with, with their events. I mean, I just, I like this a lot and I like the fact that Pinterest is that dark horse. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if this will actually increase their gender mix too. No, for, and mm -hmm. I've never understood why Pinterest wasn't, um, wasn't interesting to more men because it's a great place to, to collect things, right? Mm -hmm. If you're working on a project, if you are researching something, I mean, just for anybody, I'm not a huge Pinterest user either, yeah. um, to preface that, but the, it is a great way to put this whole collection of things together and why that never, never really took off with men from the be very beginning. I don't know why, um, but maybe this will be. A place and uh, there's also you know what's cool about this uh, event they're doing i mean i love that they're doing a test event and they're using their actual people so here's what's cool so you've got uh, penners can join the session live with pinterest creator jonathan van ness for example to learn new morning rituals and self-care routine or learn how to style your wardrobe with fashion designer Re rebecca minkoff mm -hmm. you know they've also got uh, pinterest food creators as well on there uh, and there's also people um, showing you how to uh, make some of the recipes, how to create, you know, a home spa night. I mean, so this is, this is my, this blows my mind. I mean, it's just, it makes, <laughs> I, I'm excited. I am really excited about this feature. I probably said that I, a times. I guess no, we know where you're going to be Christian. Yeah, uh, next Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, right? yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing to th um, that will be interesting too, is on May 27th, they're going to have another event for um, creators to connect and mm -hmm. um, they may have even more announcements about what's going to happen with um, Pinterest Live after these three days of testing and showcasing what it can do. So um, stay tuned next week on Thursday, we may have more announcements about what's happening with all of this. Yeah, we definitely may, yeah. So, so um, I, do we have any other topics we wanna to talk about, uh, Sarah? Or, we, or we don't. It's time to talk hey, to talk our guest, Juliet. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so Juliet um, has a great um, headline across her website that says Vis visibility that sells. And what's interesting is um, I am in a place with some slower internet. So I actually got to see your wait screen, which I thought was very clever. You know, I always love these little clever nuggets of micro content and people's websites. And you say visibility is not a sprint. Please wait as the as the page was loading. So, um, Juliet, let's talk a little bit about visibility and generating leads. But let's start with that question everybody asks, which is how often to post. 
Yes. Oh, it, this is this is the number one question. And usually they ask that because they don't want to post often enough. So we're going to just explain something, I think. Um, of course, depending on what your business is, um, you know, and 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 uh, how big your audience is, there is different demands on how much you want content you want to produce. For example, if you take someone with a huge audience and a big personal brand like Gary V, um, there was a statement by his video manager that they were aiming at producing 250 pieces of content per day. Now, you and me, we probably don't need to produce that much content because, you know, we don't have the audience to consume all that content or we don't have the uh, amount of platforms to spread it and the time and everything else. And so we just need to understand how can we compete with everything in um, the new stage? Of, so for example, I use Facebook as my center stage. So everything I, I am, I'm saying right now is particularly specifically valid for Facebook, but it will apply across the platforms as well. So when you are posting something, you're not just in competition with people in your or other experts in your niche, right? You're in competition with every single post on the newsfeed. So it's not always about the value of the post, although it's important, obviously, but it's about how often you are seen in the newsfeed by your followers in order for them to start paying attention to you. And from there, from that point, that's where you need to decide what you want to commit to. And of course, you can post a little more and there's different places. I'll give you like a tangible example. So for example, on my personal profile on Facebook, I post once a day. You know, I never fail. I post once a day. It could be a long form uh, post, some sort of valuable post, maybe sharing a personal story with some sort of, um, you know, point at the end that will serve my audience. It could be a live video. It could be a re recorded video, things like that. But what I do much more often is I utilize stories and I can post up to seven, 10 stories in a day, especially when I'm launching something and coming up to that launch date. I want to be very visible, but I don't want to be posting 20 times a day on my personal profile. That's where I use stories. If you're a business page, you're using your business page, you can do exactly the same. Stories are very, very visible and they allow you to produce a lot of content, which you can reuse the next day. So it's it's kind of, I like the fact that the stories disappear because you can save them and you can reuse them. Um, if you have a group and you want to grow, grow your group on Facebook, um, you want to be there a lot. There's a big problem with Facebook groups when admins almost wait to be validated by their audience and they get upset that the audience is not engaging. But actually, if you are producing content all the time, and that's not just the education and you know serious value content, but just some human uh, community building uh, type of content, uh, people will eventually start engaging with you and you can really build it up. So uh, what my observation is of uh, groups that are really, really well run is three, four times a day, they're posting something. Sometimes it's just funny questions and you know it's just human to human content and sometimes that they're very very valuable um posts and and audits and things like that so when you are deciding you just need to you need to decide how much content can you produce realistically right and then fill the rest with more focused uh, with content more focused on engagement so that's where you can have like a bank of short engagement focused posts questions you know little prompts um i even have a uh, over a thousand prompts that i put together in my ultimate visibility kit uh, for that purpose and i use it daily myself as well so you know there's so many things that's the answer. Find the way that you can deliver value, but you also can be visible there because you're competing all the time with every single post out there. So you do need to be frequently seen. Mm -hmm. Well, you're mentioning prompts. So let's dig into that a little bit because prompts can also generate leads, right? And so in generating leads, are you seeing prompts, videos, written posts, what is, what in your opinion is best for generating leads? Um, well, let's, let's just, um, clarify when I say prompts, what I mean by that, it would be like an idea for a post, you know, not okay. necessarily a post itself, unless it's a very short question, you know? So, um, in, and then if your question is then how do you generate leads? What is the best type of post 
to generate leads. When you have all these ideas, should I go live? Should I do a video? Should I write? Uh, that's a really, really good question because um, you need to think about the purpose of each of these types of posts. So for example, what is the purpose of a selfie? A lot of people don't like taking a selfie, right? And posting it with their content. Uh, but yet it creates that personal connection. So then when they see you on video and you know they, they read your, your other posts and they don't see you, they still, your face is something that is, is associated with your content. So that's the purpose of that. What's the purpose of the uh, written story? Uh, it's to articulate yourself. So this, when you, we are writing, we don't speak in the same way as we write. That's another mistake a lot of people make. They think that they have to articulate themselves so perfectly on video and so they avoid doing videos but written post is where we can articulate because if we were speaking in the same way on video it would be so boring nobody would be sticking around <laughs> I, I'm sure so um, when you think about us as species right in our evolution we uh, we learned to communicate through words pretty recently and there were so much more, so many, like millions of years when we didn't communicate through words, but more through observing each other's faces and movements. And, you know, it was much more instinctive communication. That's all that is still there. So when you're going live or, or you're creating video, the purpose is for your audience to observe you as well as listen to what you have to say, but observe you and then build that trust on that instinctive feeling because, you know, we'll attract some people and we'll repel others. They won't dig us. So this is where, where the purpose of the um, content is. I believe that we need to have a mixture of posts. We need to articulate ourselves. We really need to think about, you know, who we are creating the content for and articulate ourselves with the long written posts. We need to go live so people can just observe us. Because when we are just relying on written words, uh, somebody is reading and they're just creating an internal monologue, deciding for us who we are based on what, we, what we've written and what they assumed. I don't like when people assume anything about me and I don't want people in my business who are incorrect for me. So that's why you know going live is absolutely perfect because they can just really judge by their instinctive feeling to me and like my nature, you know, whether they're attracted to me or not. So I think we should do all, both. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel? So with the generating leads, how do you feel about folding calls to action in? Now we see on YouTube, there's always the like, subscribe, blah. We always have that check out this. What's your thoughts on it? And do you have any little creative ways of folding that in, especially with video? Oh, absolutely. You have to define your, uh, to yourself, what do you consider a lead? Uh, if you, and, and in, in what, what are you asking for with your call to action? So for example, if you are asking for a like or a comment on your video, you absolutely want to do that because the more likes and comments you get on your video, say on Facebook, the more the algorithm will push your, your video to other users on Facebook. So this is one of those little, and the creative way to do it is uh, when you're t telling a story, you can say, you know, give me, I always say, give me 11 in the comments if you if you felt like this i love number 11 so i just drop it there every time but that's just to help help me and my engagement now the lead for me is someone who reaches out to me and says juliet um can you tell me more about that program you mentioned and mm -hmm. with that respect we really need to be clear i'm um i market myself organically and i i work with coaches and consultants and as experts so this is this information is particularly for these kind of people and i've uh, found that the clearer we spill out in our content what we do uh, and the more often we actually talk about our methods and and our processes and and clearly talk about you know who we're uh, helping how we're taking them through these processes the more people reach out and the call to action then and lead generation is reach out and we'll have a, a chat you know so uh with my particular way and strategy of and the visibility that sells i create the content i really think about how this content can relate to the problems and specific scenarios in the lives of my potential clients before they become my clients and so my call to action is really being very clear about you know where I'm taking them from and to, how am I doing this and what's going to happen if they reach out and asking, asking them to reach out. So sometimes for experts, I feel when we hide the information, we don't 
ex spill it out, you know, what, what is going to happen. This is how exactly we help people. Um, then the audience is very confused and they don't raise their hands enough because, you know, there is no clarity and they just don't want to waste time on a call just in case it's not really suitable for them. You know, like I don't mm -hmm. book calls if I'm not sure. So clarity is the big, big um, thing. And uh, I use long form posts for spilling out all those things. It's very important that, that we do that. Mm -hmm. Does this answer your question? It sounds great, you know, and I think it ties into what we were talking about before with Instagram pronouns too, is be human, be human online, show who you are. Um, and this is a piece that you connect with too um, in your, in some of the content that I've read that you've written too, is to is to put yourself out there and what you were just saying too about being clear, spell things out because people connect to people. And um, you also had a, a great concept that sort of ties up all that we've just been talking about too, is the human design in your posting strategy and your, and your content marketing too, being true to your nature. Um, do you want to say anything about that in the last couple minutes? Um, absolutely. Um, human design is something that I've discovered only last year, and it was like a permission for me to be me. And I loved it because I, uh, when it comes to business, I'm very non-traditional. I really do um, feel that it's all about people. And when there are incorrect people in our businesses as our clients, it hurts, you know, and I don't want to be hurting. So uh, with the visibility and trying to get the right kind of clients, uh, this journey of self-discovery has been, you know, ever since I started um, on this journey of visibility, which was about four years ago, when I discovered human design, uh, everything made sense. And human design has, you know, four main types. I'm not going to go into the details. I'm also not a human design expert. I'm just literally someone who's discovered it and then seen how to apply this to my own marketing. And with me, I, I'm a projector and projector in human design is a person with an aura that it looks like this. That means that I don't see my own value. I, ref I, I sort of project and see others. I have this third eye. I see so clearly other people. And the, my, my strategy generally is to be visible to be recognized to master my you know my niche and be recognized and be seen for who I am when I read that it was absolutely you know it was a green light for me to be who I am online confidently not be afraid that I'm going to offend someone or put somebody all off with my content and that those are real, um, a lot of insecurities with people when they show up uh, you know, as the face of their businesses, they're afraid that somebody will not like, you know, that they're too much about their business or all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. But if you know that, if you know that the way you attract the best invitations into your life, in the best opportunities into your life is by showing up, doing what you really love. That's another thing about project projectors. They have to do what they love. And that attracts the opportunities um that's something that was really really amazing so what what means for me that means that i need to do more guest appearances on shows and podcasts i need to write more because this is where i really you know i i feel like my my soul flows when i write do things that i love and so the more i follow that strategy and i focus on the things that i love i uh do much less of the things that i don't like for example it's not in my nature for human design to uh, initiate anything so i can't do out outbound marketing you know like i can't do i can't reach out to people offering my services because it's always going to be a no and it has been so that's those are just small little examples. Now, the most important thing is just to be smart about it and not take it as another dogma to go by, you know, and just see what really aligns with you uh, and, and, and try and align your business with what makes you feel good. And that's where the success happens, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, Juliet, I am a personality type um, fan as well and um, use a different tool, but um, I think we could spend another hour just talking about that. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> right. So, um, but I really do love your message about show up, do what you love, but define what that love is. And um, I think that's what is great about digital marketing is that you can find your niche, your people, the platform that works for you best to be visible, exactly. right? which is what you're all about. 
Absolutely, but we just have to make sure that that um, you know our viewers and just and listeners understand that it's not that there is no magic. It's still going to take hard work, and it's still mm-hmm. going to take time, and it's still going to take perseverance and determination. But when you're doing it uh, aligned with who you are, it becomes a little easier, and so you can feel fulfilled. And right. I, I like that point that you made there about it takes time. A lot of people, when they you know, if you're a solopreneur, for example. You have all these grand visions because there's a lot of outside things that are help or that are shaping that. There are these grand visions that, you know, hey, oh, it doesn't take much time. Oh, this person's making a bunch of money, you know, and we always focus, try to focus on that and use that as our like North Star. But the thing is, a lot of those people, I mean, it, it takes hard work. It takes making the right connections with people. Um, it's not just like, hey, I can just start doing this and all of a sudden it's going to be successful. It does not work that way at all. Some people mm-hmm. are very lucky to get, you know, uh, they're able to have things work right from the start, but there's most people, it's not going to work right from the start. It does take a lot of time, mm-hmm. a lot of hard work. And if you focus on the right things, then yeah, it can move faster. However, if you're not, you know, it's going to, it's going to trudge along. So yep. it's yeah, been really good I talking ask- to you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Can I add just slightly? What, what you're saying is we, we are creating these big grand goals. Four years ago, my lifestyle right now was mm-hmm. the life of my dreams. Right now, it just feels ordinary life. You know, I already want my, my subconscious mind wants to take it for granted. And I have to remind myself that four years ago, my lifestyle right now was the life of my dreams. So we have to really be clear on these grand visions and grand dreams and and appreciate what we have achieved. And maybe at some point, not to forget that it could have been something we dreamt about as a stage towards that big grand vision as well. So that's important to focus on. Otherwise, it can be really hard. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, no, I, 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 um, I love the points there. So um, what we want to do real quick now is we want to move into our favorite part of the show. Oops, sorry, wrong slide there. Uh, we want to move into uh, tool time. So tool, tool time, time is where uh, we, we talk about a tool. Normally we talk about two tools and we're actually going to try something a little different and we're going to try to do one tool of the week. Uh, so this is a tool of the week uh, that we're going to talk about and it'll be one tool each week. So this way you can actually have the time to uh, test out that tool, see if you like it. See if you don't like it, you know, um, if we give you too many things, we want to make sure that it's actionable, that keeps you moving forward. So let's talk about uh, a tool of the week. And uh, this week's tool, Sarah, do you want to tell people about this one? This week's tool is Notify. So what's interesting, it it does really um, fall into what we've all been talking about today is when you find people that you connect with, that you um, want to follow, if you want to be that person too. Notify is a place where you can collect and curate all of the notifications for your favorite creators. Um, And if you scroll up a little bit, Christian, I think it's covering YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Discord. Am I leaving one? Out? I might be leaving one out, but it's a way for you um, to bring this all together. We know that um, notifications can be fluky, um, especially mm-hmm. on YouTube. Um, and this is a way for you to know um, what's happening, um, who, what people are doing and see the notifications come up all in your one inbox. Yeah. And that's one thing I really like about this tool. I mean, so it's a free app. You can go download it. Um, it, it works with quite a few different uh, platforms. So instead of going to all of the other platforms, you know, and having like to check Facebook and Instagram and whatnot, and sometimes we miss notifications, uh, this, this helps to consolidate things, put them in one place. Um, I, I see this as a big time saver. Again, free app. You can just simply go download it for iOS or Android, socialchefs.com mm-hmm. slash go forward slash notify. Uh, what do you think about this one, Juliet? I downloaded it. I had a look at it and uh, I even created an account there. Uh, I don't think that it integrates with Facebook just yet, which is a bit of a, you know, sad, I'm, I'm looking at it now. So uh, <laughs> a bit of a sad moment for me because, you know, I'm all Facebook. I yeah. could add my YouTube account. Um, I was contemplating whether... I could use it even on a small level. I could use it to send notifications to, you know, my list or even my clients, maybe just, mm-hmm. I just needed to kind of dig it. It's a new app. You know, I couldn't find any of the influencers that I would like to follow yet, mm-hmm. but I hope that this, the, the idea is great. The idea I think is really, really good. Uh, probably mm-hmm. right now it, it would be much more for, 
you know, gamers and and uh, content creators, YouTubers. You know, I don't. I, I see. I see it going into that direction first, and maybe then we'll find more use of it. But I was very surprised. I do like time saving, and I do like to be notified. You know without going out of my way and forgetting then what I wanted to follow. So. Right. I like that it has lists. You know, as I'm looking for content, especially for um, work in a few spaces where I have to create the own, the content. So yeah. it gives me a chance to say, okay, here's, here's client A's interest lists. Here's client B's interest lists. Um, and and kind of pulls that together. It's going to be interesting. We're starting to see more movement in Discord. Some folks, um, you know, YouTube influencers, creators are using Discord more. And I, I think we may start to see Discord a little bit more. Christian and I may be talking about it a bit mm -hmm. more um, in the coming weeks too, as some some little things seem to be bubbling up on that platform as well. So um, it's kind of a cool tool, something to try out, see if it works for you, helps you out with, um, uh, content curation and ideas and just general entertainment too, I think. Yeah. And well, and the other key thing I think we should just mention here, it's to get started again, like let's look at like version one versus like version two. So version one would be, they need to get people to use the platform. So they're going to reach out to the larger creators. They're going to get the people that have the big audiences there. Cause that's going to help drive some you know interest and adoption. And then, then they're going to roll it out very likely to other people. So um, I think it's a useful uh, product. It's not going to have every single person you're going to want on there, obviously, because they are getting started and they probably do also want to verify who they allow because you don't want everyone to be on there. So uh, you want to, you know, you want to make sure you highlight the best of the best. So that's notify a uh, free app of the week. Is there anything else you want to add uh, to this, Sarah? I don't think so. I think it's time for us to wrap up. Sounds good. And yes. thank so. Juliet, um, not just for your wisdom, but also your in inspiration, right? I think that's something was wonderful that you folded in a little bit of um, inspiring words for us to persevere and be determined um, to build the lives that we want. So Juliet, where's the best place for people to get in touch with you if they want to connect with you? Facebook, uh, look me up on Facebook, Juliet Stapleton. In fact, I, I operate from my personal profile a lot. So you can send me a friend request to follow the profile. I have a business page there. Or you can go to julietstapleton.com and um, check me out there. Fantastic. And Sarah, what's yeah. the best place for people to get in touch with you as well? You can find me across social media at Sarah Monroe VT. Fantastic. And I'm um, Christian Karasevich, and this has been uh, episode 292 of Social Chatter. You can connect with me at um, Social Chefs as well. Uh, that's our, our business channel. Uh, so with that, uh, I want to just let you guys know about just a couple of updates. We've got a Social uh, Chatter, the blog recap going out. Uh, it's going out this weekend, socialchefs.com slash SC292. That'll get you the uh, article. There's also an Alexa flash briefing at socialchefs.com slash Alexa, if you want the seven to 10 minute version of this episode. And then just lastly, uh, we have a great guest joining us next week. It's going to be uh, Junaid uh, Ahmed at, um, let's see, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time next Thursday, youtube.com slash socialchefs or facebook.com forward slash socialchefs. Uh, I want to thank Juliet. I want to thank Sarah. And I want to wish you all uh, just a great weekend and keep an eye out for that blog post. But thanks a lot for tuning yeah. in. Bye, thank everyone. You.